Introducing Explosive Power with Olympic weightlifter and strength coach, John Abdo. Hello, and welcome to Explosive Power. My name is John Abdo. This videotape is dedicated to all you athletes who want to enhance your athletic performance and muscular appearance. The sport of Olympic weightlifting is a fascinating sport. I've been studying it now for over 20 years. I've been learning most of my Olympic weightlifting knowledge from Soviet sources. The great thing about Olympic weightlifting is that not only is this sport applicable for the competitive Olympic sport in the Olympic Games, but it's also applicable to all you athletes out there who want to increase explosion, fast twitch muscle fiber contraction, and coordination. Since Olympic weightlifting is very complicated, all the exercises take a lot of time to learn. So during my fitness profile television show, I've been able to compile a series of segments that actually dedicated themselves to the various components of Olympic weightlifting. So in this videotape, you'll see segments as they aired on national television that demonstrates and explains in detail the Olympic lifts. Prior to commencing any weight training program, let alone those incorporating the multifaceted Olympic lifts, it's imperative that you prepare your body. Understand that every joint in the body is in one way or another affected with Olympic weightlifting. The wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, the whole spinal column, including the lumbar vertebrae, the lower back, the hips, the knees, and the ankles, all bend and flex during these movements. So make sure that you stretch out or flexibilize the muscles, tendons, and ligaments for all those body joints. Additionally, don't perform Olympic weightlifting movements unconditioned. Even if you're stretched and flexible, that does not mean that you're ready to endure the in Olympic lifts themselves. So make sure that you do exercises like hyperextensions, leg extensions, leg curls for the knees, the hyperextensions for the lower back, some shoulder presses for the shoulder joints, some curls and tricep extensions for the elbows. Then you're prepared to go into Olympic weightlifting. Now in this videotape, I want to show the Olympic lifts in the reverse order. In Olympic weightlifting competition, you start with the snatch and then you go to the clean and jerk. But the snatch is the most sophisticated lift of all the lifts on the face of this earth, so therefore it's very difficult to learn. So coaches in Olympic weightlifting competition teach the power clean first. Once the power clean technique is learned, then they go to a more progressive technique in the power snatch. So let's proceed with explosive power, teaching you the intricate facets of Olympic weightlifting and its various components. This is the power clean, one of many Olympic lifts that I've shown you here in the fitness profile. And in this segment, I want to kick off a three-part series showing you the exercises and the movements themselves that comprise Olympic weightlifting and explain to you how they will enhance your athletic performance. As with any technical lift, I suggest always rehearsing your muscular patterns of coordination. For the power clean, I prefer just a broomstick. What this does is send the mental impulses through the nervous system to activate the muscles in their proper sequence, obviously preparing you for the resistances that lie ahead. Make sure you secure your belt. That's very, very important because the lumbar vertebrae are susceptible to a lot of leverage strain while performing the power clean. I like to step inside the bar and get a grip right outside shoulders width meaning that when the bar is flipped onto my chest, my hands are outside shoulders. If my hands were lying on top of my shoulders, it would put too much strain to the elbows. So it's obvious that body positioning, particularly gripping, is very, very important, especially for you big guys out there who have big biceps and may be distracted from doing this exercise because it puts a lot of undue strain to the elbows and wrists. Now let's take another look at a different angle of the same exercise. And analyzing the power clean is very important from a coach's standpoint to look at it from various angles, the front and from both sides. What you want to do is make sure that the leverage is for you, meaning that the bar is always close to the body. If the bar gets away from the body, the leverage is against you, making the exercise much more difficult or causing a swinging action. And as you can watch my technique here, the bar slides up the shins, the thighs, the stomach, and the chest, keeping my leverage is very strong and totally in control of the movement. Knowing that bar body position is very, very important, here's a form of the power clean, actually a breakdown version of the power clean that allows you to rehearse that bar pattern. It is called the clean pull or the high pull. 
What you want to do is just go through the full phase of the exercise before flipping it onto the shoulders or the chest. This exercise not only rehearses muscular patterns of coordination for the pull itself, it develops awesome strength. In fact, individuals who compete in Olympic weightlifting can go as much as 150% of their actual clean and jerk poundages to practice here in the high pull. For those of you wanting to learn to power clean, I encourage a lot of patients, practice with the broomstick and do high pulls here before going into the, the full complete power clean itself. Now here's a workout I had at the Powerhouse Gym several months after the workout that you just seen. I'm a little leaner here and a lot faster. I practice my exercises daily with the broomstick or with the bar itself and you could see an accelerated contraction as I'm doing the exercise itself. What I want to do is make sure it's a total body contraction. My spinal column is straight and when the bar gets over my knees I jump into it, explode into it and the bar flips up onto the chest. But making sure that that bar body position is again close to my body so the leverage is strong. I hope you found my explanation and demonstration of the power clean beneficial to your own strength and athletic development. And as you continue your viewing membership here in the Fitness Profile, we're going to continue to bring you some more of these sophisticated technologies. Next week, it'll be part two of this series, which will be the clean and jerk. The following week, part three, which will be the snag. Last week, I brought it to here. This week, I got to bring it way up here. This is the clean and jerk. And as you recall from last week's segment, I demonstrated a power clean, which kicked off this three-part series explaining and demonstrating the value of Olympic weightlifting to you. In this segment, it's the clean and jerk. And let me explain some more about this fascinating exercise. The clean and jerk is a very sophisticated, multifaceted exercise that's prefaced with the power clean. And in a previous episode of the Fitness Profile, we had the unique opportunity to visit up with the Chicago Bulls to watch their power forward, Horace Grant, perform this unique exercise. It's obvious that elite athletes are performing this exercise to gain the edge in their competition. And you can use this exercise too. Any level athlete can perform this exercise to become a winner. Now let me break down the intricate components of the actual clean and jerk. Keep your eyes peeled because there's so much that's happening on this particular exercise. You're doing pulling, reverse curling, upright rowing, squatting, pushing, lunging. Everything is incorporated into one movement. That's why they call it the king of the Olympic lifts. When preparing to do a clean and jerk, get inside the bar like you would a power clean. Since heavier weights are handled, you can't pull it as high. So pull it as high as you can and drop down into a front squat. Now this requires a lot of technique, both flexibility and body positioning. Your ankles, your knees, and your lower back have to be in good condition in order for you to go into a squat clean like I'm doing right here. If you're not conditioned for this, continue to do your power cleans and then go into the jerk. Now remember, strength isn't the only factor here in the Olympic list, particularly the clean and jerk. Flexibility, balance, coordination, and technique is. So handle a light weight until you get used or comfortable to the positions. So as your Olympic coach, I'm going to discourage you from heavy resistances until you learn technique. Now the split jerk itself offers a variety of athletic challenges in and of itself. The trick here is to lower your body underneath the bar as you're pressing it up overhead. This is done by splitting the feet in the lunge position. By doing that, automatically your body lowers to the ground. The wider your feet are away from each other, the lower your body is to the ground. So after you clean it, you drive it up overhead with the legs, finish with the shoulders and arms, and you're already in a lunge position which allows you to snap underneath the bar. Now to practice a jerk, you don't always have to do a power clean beforehand. You can clean it once and do simultaneous jerks in a row, or you can take the bar off the rack, like in a squat rack for instance, and do jerks from the rack. Now here what I want to do is power clean it once, and now I'm going to practice my jerk. What I have to do is get a strong rack. That means the shoulders, the elbows, and the wrists are securely fastening the bar to my clavicles. I dip strong, three to four inches, keep my back tight, and thrust it up overhead going into that lunge position. This is the split jerk. Now keep in mind that all the Olympic lifts can be broken down. We can do the power cleans. On the previous episode, we did high pulls. Here we're doing split jerks, and now we're going to break it down to just squat cleans. Now watch my feet very, very closely. 
As I'm pulling the bar up, boom, what happens? They pop to the side. Doesn't look like much, but the resistance of the barbell, along with my body weight, has to be airlifted. You have to explode strongly enough to lift the resistance of the weight and your body weight at the same time. If you don't explode into the weight, you cannot pop your feet. There's no way you could slide your feet onto the ground to take you from a pulling stance into a squatting stance. And a squatting stance is a wider stance than your pulling stance. So it's very, very important to understand the popping action of the feet in the power clean and jerk. Now here's some rare footage that I had the opportunity to tape at the Institute of Physical Culture in Moscow. These are Russian Olympic weightlifters. And you could see the different varieties of techniques they use in their training. That was the power clean and the power press. Olympic weightlifting is the only form of strength development that these athletes use for Olympic competition. As you look around this facility, all they have is a squat rack, a Roman chair in the background, and the bar itself. Olympic weightlifting and its various combinations literally comprise about 90% of the Soviet athletes training regimen. Here's a power clean and now a power jerk. This variation allows the athlete to pop his feet to the side as opposed to splitting him forward and backward as in the lunge position. The clean and jerk offers a variety of complex elements that allow you to become a terrific athlete. Again, practice with light weights to learn technique. A lot of strain on the body joints. By working light and going upwards, you have a lot of challenges, a lot of goals. By accomplishing your goals, you become a more confident, better athlete. So that's the clean and jerk, as we demonstrated it many times over the years here on the Fitness Profile. It's the king of the Olympic lifts. In part three, which is next week, it's the fastest Olympic lift, actually it's the fastest lift of any exercise, it's called the snatch.